sorry for the delay. Again, a pleasant morning to everyone, uh, our dear, my dear brethren, and also to our visitors who are joining us here in our uh, worship place, and also those who are joining us in Facebook. We are indeed uh, grateful that uh, you can join us uh, today. Uh, it's July 7. Uh, time is really fleeting. And uh, I remember last week in my opening, I used the example of our, of our president, BBM. Though I am not a fan of him, but again, as I mentioned, he is still our president. And uh, the third sauna of our president, Bongbor Marcos, will be held in, I think, in two weeks' time, July 22 to be exact. And uh, we know sauna. We are all very familiar with it. Aside from uh, reporting to the nation, what they have accomplished in these last two years, uh, they will also give an information of their uh, plan for the remaining term, uh, meaning four years. And it will be an event for the politicians, especially for the members of the House of Congress. When we say House of Congress, it includes both the senators and uh, uh, the congressmen. And uh, together with them are their spouses who flash their signature gowns and barongs as fashion statements. Uh, two weeks ago, we were in Lumban uh, scouting for uh, loads of my two graduate uh, kids. I was surprised of the price of the politicians' price of their barong, hundreds of thousands. Imagine, very expensive. And normally, for big events like this, you cannot participate in such gatherings, like in their evening banquets, unless you are invited. In most cases, the invites, the invitees are dignitaries in the society, and they make themselves available. Otherwise, it will be a missed opportunity. If you are not in the list of guests, or not part of the invitation, then you definitely cannot join that event. Such is the case when the Lord Jesus told the parable of the banquet to the man that is, uh, it was mentioned in the passage that we'll be reading, and uh, it's presumably the ruler of the Pharisees who invited him in his house for dinner. And with that, we shall be reading our text for this morning, uh, Luke 14, uh, verses 12 to 24. Our focus will actually be verses 15 to 24, but we shall be reading the entire uh, passage for this purpose. Luke 14, 12 to 24. He said also to the man who had invited him, When you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. When one of those who reclined at table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. But he said to him, A man once gave a great banquet, and invited many. And at the time for the banquet, he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a field, and I must go out and see it. Please have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to examine them. Please have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house became angry and said to his servant, Go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in the poor and crippled and blind and lame. And the servant said, Sir, what you have commanded has been done. And still there is room. And the master said to the servant, Go out to the highways and hedges and compel people to come in, that my house may be filled. For I tell you, 
none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. This is the inspired word of the Lord our God. Many of us are familiar with this parable that we just read of Jesus uh, as he spoke to those who were invited in the banquet. The parable actually has a parallel in Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 to 14. But it is only in this synoptic gospel that you can find the parallel. It is never mentioned in, uh, in the Mark gospel, nor in the gospel of John. For uh, the Johannine gospels, which is different from the synoptic gospels, has a different line of telling the life of Jesus and his teachings like those of the synoptic gospels. And here, we just read that after challenging and explaining to the lawyers and Pharisees about the Sabbath, when he healed the man who had dropsy, Jesus proceeded to the parable of the wedding feast, that is in verse 7. Uh, it's important that I take up from there so that we will understand the context. And that highlights the importance of humility, especially for those in the high positions of the society even if they are invited in popular or highly esteemed events like this. Then immediately, the Lord proceeded to tell another parable, and that is the parable of the banquet, which we just read. And this highlights the invitation of the Lord for salvation and the dangers of rejecting it. There were various situations that were cited which led to the stern warning of Jesus as mentioned in verse 24. And with that, I would, like you, I would like to give you the simple message this morning. Christ's invitation to his kingdom is a gracious opportunity not to be missed, for by doing so, it becomes lost opportunity. Ang paanyaya ni Heso Kristo sa kanyang kaharian ay isang magandang pagkakataon na hindi dapat palampasin na kung hahayaan ay hahantong sa nasayang na pagkakataon. Christ's invitation to His kingdom is a gracious opportunity not to be missed for by doing so, it becomes lost opportunity. Most of us are familiar with the parables. Of Jesus. As we know, a parable is a comparison story. It is using figure of speech, mostly simile or metaphor, to help the listeners move from a familiar, familiar reality or what is happening before them into a deeper understanding of important truths. According to John MacArthur, the parables of Jesus are ingeniously simple words, picture, simple word pictures with profound spiritual lessons. This means that all the words used by Jesus in his parables are individually and collectively necessary, for we need every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And here in the passage we read, we saw how Christ highlights the importance of being invited in the Lord's banquet, or we can say God's kingdom. Sorry. Uh, yeah. And as I mentioned, since verse 15, the main uh, start of our uh, message for today, takes off from the preceding verse, which indicates an eschatological allusion. Remember, it mentions uh, resurrection or meaning about the last days. Then we can see that the Lord Jesus emphasizes the primacy of not missing the great invitation for inclusion to his kingdom. And from there, if we read this passage uh, before or uh, ahead before our worship today, there are two uh, glaring points that we can draw from it. And these are the two essential points that I would like to give you this morning. The first is very basic. Entrance to the kingdom is only by invitation. Ang pagpasok sa kaharian ay sa pamamagitan lamang ng paanyaya. And secondly, 
missed opportunity that is now offered to the seemingly unworthy. Nakalampas na pagkakataon na ngayoy iniaalok sa mga tila hindi karapat dapat. Again, missed opportunity that is now offered to the seemingly unworthy. The first point, entrance to the kingdom is only by invitation. Take note that the parable of the great banquet which we read, again, we started reading in verse 12, here on the ESB version, but if you are also reading in the other version of the Bible, especially in the New King James Version, uh, it starts in verse 15, and the title there is the parable of the great supper. While in our, the passage we read in ESV, it is the parable of the great banquet. Either way, most Bible scholars agree that they have the same theme and lesson, thus our focus will be on the one that we read, verses 15 to 24. I mentioned a while ago that this passage about the banquet is an imagery of eschatological theme. As the preceding verse 14, which Jesus took up, talks about the resurrection of the righteous. These preceding verses 12 to 14 talks about the issue of reciprocity regarding inviting those whom they believe would return the same favor to them. Reciprocity means may kapalit, may balik. And the Lord Jesus reminded those who were with him in the table that when you invite, do not invite those who can give the favor back to you. Invite those who cannot return anything to you. Jesus admonished the hearers to avoid this kind of practice and assure that those who obey his command will be blessed in the resurrection. And then in verse 15, he started to tell the guests, declaring, ah, he starts with the guests declaring blessedness for those who will eat bread at the kingdom of God. This is now where Jesus started this parable pertaining to the invitation to the banquet. Again, I mentioned a while ago that this is a parallel, a parallel uh, uh, account in the book of Matthew. But there, it was mentioned uh, in the plural terms of having many servants to follow up the invitees. But in our passage, you will notice that it was only in a singular form. And according to the Bible scholars, this is actually referring to Jesus himself who was following up the invitees. So, again, we shall focus on this passage of Luke in the ESV. We can say that the host of the banquet was Jesus, and he already sent out the invitations to many. That was clear in verse 16. And it's also clear that the invitation was accepted already by those who receive it. Remember, uh, hence the preparation of the banquet, I'm sure many of us here, if not all, has hosted a gathering, a party in your home, and you invite friends or families. And you ask them, are you going to come or not? Certainly, you will not prepare anything if no one is coming. But when even one or two is coming, you will prepare something. And here, simply when the Lord said, uh, when he made the invitation, the Pharisees has already, had already accepted it. He was referring to them. And in verse 17, when the host of the banquet asked his servants to make a follow-up of the invitees for the banquet is ready, this is where now the problem starts. The invitees now begin to make their own excuses. Notice in verse 18, which says, they all alike make excuses, meaning there is unity, there is unison of response of this uh, invitees. Uh, there's similarity in their position on the invitation that was sent by the master or by the Lord. However, they are in different modes. Let us tackle a little bit these three. The first one, as mentioned, is uh, the person who bought a piece of land. 
And he was making an excuse that he cannot join, though he already accepted the invitation or received the invitation. On the last minute, he says, I need to visit my land. Who among us, I'm sure some of us here owns a piece of land. I, I have. And it's normal for anyone who has a piece of land has already scrutinized as much ahead. You study the land before you buy it. You will check its topography, its location, its vegetation, its safety, and of course, you will check the papers. But this person made a lame excuse of skipping the great banquet or the great invitation. Secondly, actually it's uh, almost uh, similar to this uh, landowner wherein this person had to beg of himself because he purchased five yokes of oxen. According to Bible scholars, this is actually a much richer person. They said he actually owns 100 hectares of land. That's quite a lot. And uh, so, again, it's the same thing. When you buy land and when you buy animals, you have to check if like whether a cow or pig or chicken, if they have infirmities or if they are infested with diseases, meaning you already know what you already purchased. So these two, uh, as clearly shown, are more concerned with their financial status or position than the invitation of the banquet. And now we come to the third uh, invitee or the third person used by the Lord Jesus. And this is the man who just, who just got married. You know, in Jewish tradition, uh, if, uh, they allow a man to have one year uh, time to know his wife. That is allowed. Especially if you're in the military, after being in the battlefield for so long and you got married, okay, you are excused. Even if there's a very great event, you are excused. But take note, these three invitees, only the two excuse themselves. themselves. This third one just clearly said, I just got married, but there was no courtesy at all to say, please have me excuse. It shows the arrogance of people uh, because they are very presumptuous at times when it comes to the invitation of the gospel or when it comes to the kingdom concerns of the Lord. Thus, the master condemns those excuses my, made by these three invitees as lame and insulting by exchanging the glory of the kingdom and reneging their acceptance of the invitation. Remember that they already accepted the invitation. That's why the banquet was already prepared. Yet, when, the, when they were called, okay, the food is already uh, ready, I prepared so much, the program is ready, but now they won't come. Jesus was clearly sending this strong message to the Pharisees. Remember, he was dining with the ruler of the Pharisees. They already knew Christ and the scriptures, yet they continue to deny his kingship and lordship, hence rejecting his invitation to join the banquet for his kingdom. Jesus already foreknew ahead that these Pharisees whom he was with are having that kind of position based on the utterance of the one mentioned in verse 15. For he believes he's already part of the kingdom of Christ. That is being presumptuous. And this parable was a strong rebuke to them already. So the point here is very simple. Worldly affections are sure obstructions in deciding for Christ's kingdom. Ang mga makamundong pagtatangi ay tiyak na mga hadlang sa pagpapasya para sa kaharian ni Kristo. Worldly affections are sure obstructions in deciding for Christ's kingdom. And we know this very well. This has been the agenda of Satan ever since. 2 Corinthians 4.4 clearly said this. Uh, Paul said, 
In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So it's very clear. Satan is at work and he is continues to blind everyone. Sometimes even believers, he continues to obscure their vision, especially when they are about to worship before God. And many fall into this path because they don't want to share in the hope of the resurrection. How does this parable apply to us? I'm pretty sure we can relate to this very well, as the Lord Jesus stated in this passage. One way or another, we are guilty of this, for we cannot deny that there are times when we give priority, priority more to what the world offers and set aside the invitation. We certainly are not Pharisees, but sometimes we behave like one. We profess to the world that we are a follower of Christ, but the evidence seems obscured when it comes to feasting in his kingdom. And we, we don't need to go far to see the manifestations. And I would like to throw this litany of questions before you this morning and allow me to read them. Are we sometimes or more often fettered when we prepare for the Sunday's worship? Do we really have the seal to worship our God on Sundays or the warmth and comfort of our beds and pillows shackles us that it takes so much effort for our parents or our housemates to pull us up and prepare for the Lord's Day worship? Do the invitation of friends, peers, and the like sound more attractive and alluring that letting go of them is a wasted opportunity of fun and pleasure? Do business meetings, lunch or dinner with esteemed colleagues, office dignitaries, or high officials of the society present more opportunities for connections network, or future social recognition, accolades, and favor? Or does the opportunity of getting more income from business transactions too hard to let go of, for by it, there could have been more money in our accounts? All of these current behaviors were captured by the Lord Jesus in the just three examples that he mentioned. How do we treat then the invitation of the gospel of which out of the richness of God's grace and providence we have the Sabbath or more so the Lord's Day to celebrate where we can feast on his saving gospel as a center of our worship? Does our academic knowledge of doctrine or theology comfort us or has numbed us na manid na tayo that we think we are already deserving to feast on the table. This was the rebuke of the Lord Jesus in the parable which he just said. Remember, not everyone has the privilege to be invited. Many had to strive just to hear the word of God or even trying to get hold of the Bible. We already heard many numerous accounts. Those who are staying in the Middle East, those who are in Africa, those who are in difficult places. Many of them are dying just to hear the gospel. But we here who live in a practically free world, having all the opportunities to hear, read and or see God's word, yet we find all the excuses to be lame in our worship and ends up rejecting the invitation of Christ in his banquet of salvation. This is the reality that is happening to many professing Christians right now. 
to many churches. This is very pervasive. So the challenge is examine your position of prioritizing earthly affections over the, the glory of kingdom invitation. Suriin mo ang iyong posisyon sa pagtangi sa makalupang alalahanin kaysa sa kalawalhatian ng imbitasyon sa kaharian. Again, examine your position of prioritizing earthly affections over the glory of kingdom invitation. Again, this is what Satan has been doing since the creation since the fall of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And he will never stop until, of course, Jesus returns. For the Lord said he will bind this great enemy upon his return. Isn't it that we should marvel that God initiated the banquet for our good and sent the invitation not just to selected people but to everyone? We saw that in the, in the passage. First, it was in the Pharisees, but later on, we will exegete on that in a while. It now extends to everyone. Take note that the banquet is ready. Sumptuous food is already prepared, and there's no point of canceling the event, which I mentioned a while ago. This parable, as I mentioned, has an eschatological theme. This actually refers since the inauguration of the Lord Jesus in this world. That is the time when the invitation was clearly sent. Thus, the invitation has been ongoing since, and this privileged feeling Pharisees are ignoring this great invitation to the kingdom. Remember, they were given RSVP. You know RSVP, I'm sure. I think no one here does not understand RSVP. It's a French term, but in plain English, respond as you please. That's a very simple meaning of that. And these Pharisees already responded. However, they were absent during the banquet proper. Thus, after the servant reported the apparent rejection of those invitees to the banquet, the Lord who was now angry by their arrogance, because of their arrogance, now commanded his servant in verse 21 to invite those who were considered as part of the lower classes of the society. It had a subsequent instruction in verse 23 to reach those in the highways and hedges to serve the invitation for this is st there is still room. First invitation was to the Pharisees, those who, was, who were in the leadership. Second, those were to the lower class of the society, still part of the Jews. But, you know, in, in Jewish tradition, uh, those who are deemed imperfect, or we can say have physical uh, deformities, like it was mentioned, the, the blind, the lame, the maimed, and the poor, they were not allowed to participate in full worship in the temple. But now the invitation is being sent to them. But what is more, when the Lord said in verse 23, to go out to the highways uh, and to the hedges, meaning it's an open rebuke to the Pharisees, for they missed the great opportunity Thus, he made the concluding statement in verse 24, which brings us to the second point, missed opportunity that is now offered to the seemingly unworthy. I just mentioned that a while ago. Those second class of, uh, in the society who are the, pay, uh, the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, now they are invited. But now also to those who are outside. So, what do we mean by those in the highways and the hedges? In the highways, meaning they had to go very, very far. Normally, when the servants are given instruction, 
they will only reach those within their scope. But here, there's a very clear instruction from the master. And what do we mean by hedges? I'm sure we are familiar with hedges. Hedges meaning a fence, a barrier, backward. So when there's a fence, when there's an obstruction, normally those behind those cannot see what's on the other side. Meaning they are prevented. Either they don't want to see it or they are being barred. So what this shows is now the gospel has broken those hedges and needs to reach those who are even averse to the gospel. This is how great, how gracious our God is. Remember, he instructed the servant, compel them to come. The compel there doesn't mean to coerce, but to persuade. And we can see the graciousness of God here. God has been so generous with his mercy and grace that he took it to himself to take the initiative to reach out even to the undeserving people who have been outside his covenant. And this is the very reason why he, has, he had to send out his servant. And for this case, it is the Lord Jesus, the only begotten Son of God. It is God himself who reached out to everyone. Hence, this inaugurated invitation, this great banquet. This is the reason why missions have to be done in order to reach far-flung places, even those very dangerous areas, because God is consistent with what he declared. Remember, in 1 Timothy 2 verse 4, he says, God, uh, he desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Also in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, it says there, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. It's very clear. Simply said, the mission has always been on an expansion for the room, which is not yet fully filled. And the Lord treats this with utmost importance. Thus, he makes the preaching of his word always urgent. That is why those who labor in the word continue to persevere, to preach the gospel and evangelize anywhere possible. This is the clear command of God. Remember when Jesus in his uh, earthly ministries, when he was still alive, that what he was doing. And immediately after the resurrection, that was his first commandment in Matthew 28 and in Mark 16, 15. Go preach the word to all nations and make disciples. And now in verse 24, this is now the concluding statement of the Lord Jesus in a parable. What this shows, it, it summarizes what Jesus said as we read in this passage, For I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. Jesus gave a stern warning to those who rejected the invitation. Take note of the use, uh, take note of the, uh, the use of the word I. If you, read, if you try to reread the passage again, everything was in the third person. A man who bought a land, a man who bought an oxen, a man who got married, and here now, he says, I, first person. And Jesus now speak, speaking to the visitors, now plural, who were with him. Jesus commonly ends some of his parables and teachings with a personal note. You can find that in Luke 11, verse 8, in Luke 15, verse 7 and 10, in Luke 18, verse 8, and in Luke 14, uh, sorry, eight, uh, 18, verse 8 and 14, and in Luke 19, verse 26. 
So Jesus is always using the word or the message, I tell you, for I tell you, because he wants to impart a clear message to, hear, to his hearer, readers who rejected the invitation of the gospel and will no longer have the opportunity to be included in his banquet. They rejected God's greatest gift, the opportunity to sit and feast at the table of eternal fellowship with God. But while this offer or invitation is already a forever lost opportunity for those who rejected it, it is now available to each one of us, though some of us or many of us has already accepted it, but for those who are not yet with Christ, it is now being offered to you. So the simple point is the gracious invitation for inclusion. In Christ's kingdom is a grand opportunity that should never be missed by its recipients. Ang mapagbiyayang paanyaya na mapabilang sa kaharian ni Heso Kristo ay isang dakilang pagkakataon na hindi dapat palampasin ng mga tatanggap nito. Again, the gracious invitation for inclusion in Christ's kingdom is a grand opportunity that should never be missed by its, its recipient. Yet, many still continue to intentionally miss or reject this grand invitation. They will try to show some form of godliness, but in fact, they don't have any Christ in them, letting go of a great salvation, as Hebrews chapter 2 verse 3 said. I will use again NBA. NBA season is done, but now they also just finished the NBA draft. Uh, for the benefit of those who are not familiar how draft is being done, whenever, play, whenever players are drafted, normally uh, they are presented to all the teams. And from the, we can say, the most talented, the most gifted, even to those who seem to be not worthy to be there. And the teams now will have to select their top choices. Of course, it goes without saying that they will select those who, are, who have shown a very good scorer, very good player. And, of course, there are also those who are undeserving drafted. But reality shows that when the real games come, even those who are the topmost become a liability. They become spoiled brats like the Pharisees. And even those who are unworthy, they perform well because they were given the opportunity. It is the very same case when it comes to the kingdom invitation. So my challenge to you, everyone, is consider it the grandest event in your life when you are invited to the kingdom of Christ that should elicit outright acceptance. Ituring mong pinakadakilang kaganapan sa iyong buhay kapag inanyayahan ka sa kaharian ni Kristo na dapat magbunsod ng tahasang pagtanggap. Consider it the grandest event in your life when you are invited to the kingdom of Christ that should elicit outright acceptance. Remember the title of our parable, The Great Banquet. Not everyone is, give, is given this kind of opportunity. Many have been invited, yet they rejected and they will forever languish in misery for missing this great opportunity. Richard Baxter, many of us here are familiar with Richard Baxter, the Puritan in the 17th century, uh, who was very instrumental in the post-Reformation period, uh, for he is also a nonconformist, he fought against the Acts of Uniformity in England in 1662, and he published so many books. And one of his uh, most famous books 
is the saints' everlasting rest. And this is what he said in chapter 5, which says about the great misery of those who lose the saints' rest. I translated this to contemporary English because it was written in old English. But to, to, for easier understanding, this is what he said. But if you end your days in your unregenerate state, as sure as the heavens are over your head and the earth under your feet, you shall be shut out of the rest of the saints and receive your portion in everlasting fire. I expect you, you will turn upon, you will turn, you will turn upon me and say, when did God show you the book of life or tell you who they are that shall be saved and who shut out? I answer, I do not name you, nor any other. I only concluded of the unregenerate in general, and of you, if you be such a one. God has initiated the invitation through Christ Jesus. The offer to his banquet in his kingdom is now and always before us. Don't delay. Don't linger. Accept the invitation and feast and dine in Christ's glorious kingdom. Praise be the name of God. And we shall be ending uh, by singing this response hymn, I am resolved. In the very first stanza, it clearly says, I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, Things have allured my sight. Let us not be like those who re rejected the invitation. Let us not be like those who will end up misery. Don't tarry. Don't linger. Come to Jesus now. Let us all rise and sing before our God. This response him, I am resolved. Let us close in prayer. Our great God and Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this privilege that you have granted to us to be ministered by your word. Thank you for the great message of the parable of the banquet, the great invitation that you initiated to each one of us. Thank you for the gospel of Jesus. For he continues to send it, to allow it to speak to us. Thank you for the reminder, the stern warning to the Pharisees who were presumptuous, thinking that they already accepted the invitation, yet ultimately they rejected it. We are never Pharisees. But we cannot deny that it is you, O oh God, who sees our hearts. You may see in us even the behavior in the heart of a Pharisee. And we continue to seek your forgiveness, O oh Lord, if we behave like one at times. Thank you for this great reminder, O oh Lord, that even though we are already saved, the invitation to feast in your kingdom is always there. The invitation to feast on your word, Lord's day after Lord's day. May you continue to challenge each one of us to be reminded how great a salvation you have given to us. That we have this kind of privilege that we can hear the teaching of your word, the reminder of, of your word. For sinners still we are, despite being saved. And if not nurtured by the scriptures, we can easily fall into the temptation that pervades around us. May you remind us, O oh Lord, not to linger, not to tarry, but to always to come to Christ and always have that heart of repentance. Every day, Lord, as we start 
our day as we open our eyes, that you may, you may be in our thought, that we ponder on your word, that we meditate on it, so that we can face this hostile world that can easily ensnare and blind our vision. And we also throw this challenge, O oh Lord, may you convict the hearts of those sinners, those unbelievers who are not yet submitted to the Lordship of Jesus. May they see the great invitation that is set before them. How you reminded them that the time is now to come to you. Because the banquet, the food is ready to be feasted and dine upon. Thank you, Father, for this great reminder. And truly, thank you for the moving of your Holy Spirit in our midst. May we truly imbibe what you have taught us this morning. And even the message later this day, may we truly have that heart of submission. May the Holy Spirit break the barriers, the hedges that makes us in our hearts, O oh Lord. And truly, may your name be glorified and praised always. Once again, thank you, Father, be in our midst and in the remaining events of this day. For we lift all of this to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.